Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe thermoregulation in ectotherms. OK, I'm showing you here a bird, in this case a pigeon, and a mammal, in this case a cat. Now, birds and mammals can regulate their core body temperature independently of the environment. Scientists call these animals endotherms. Endotherms have evolved mechanisms to actively increase or decrease their core body temperature. For example, endotherms can use metabolic reactions as a source of heat. So endotherms can keep their core body temperature stable, even if the temperature of the environment changes. In contrast, ectothermic organisms cannot control their core body temperature in this way. Ectotherms include all invertebrates, for example insects. Fish, amphibians and reptiles are also ectotherms. In the case of ectotherms, the environment has a massive effect on their core body temperature. Now the core body temperature of any organism is very important to how that organism functions, and that's due to enzymes. Virtually every chemical reaction taking place in cells is catalyzed by enzymes. And the activity of enzymes is strongly affected by temperature. I'm showing you here how the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction depends on temperature. Enzymes work most effectively at their optimum temperature, and the optimum temperature depends on the organism. Below the optimum temperature, enzyme activity is reduced. This could mean that reactions may take place too slowly for an organism to function effectively. If the temperature is greater than the optimum, then enzymes can become permanently denatured, and this could result in the death of an organism. So in this video, we're looking at how ectotherms regulate their core body temperature. Now I should point out that we're going to look at land-based ectotherms. The temperature of both the air and land can vary massively throughout the day, and also during the year. So land-based ectotherms face significant challenges regulating their core body temperature. Aquatic ectotherms, such as fish, face much less of a challenge. That's because the temperature of water tends to remain relatively stable, as water has a high specific heat capacity. And remember that amphibians also spend a large part of their life in water. Now, unlike endotherms, ectotherms cannot rely on metabolism to control their core body temperature. Instead, ectotherms change their behavior. So let's start by seeing how ectotherms can absorb more heat energy from their environment. By doing this, they can increase their core body temperature. I'm showing you here a lizard basking in the sun. By doing this, lizards absorb solar radiation, which increases the lizard's core temperature. And lizards often do this to warm up at the start of the day. Early in the morning, lizards are often very slow moving as their body temperature is low. Once they increase their core body temperature by basking, the lizards can then carry out normal functions, such as hunting for food. Lizards will also position their body so that they're in full sun. This increases the amount of radiation absorbed. Flying insects, such as butterflies, can also absorb radiation by spreading their wings. This helps them to warm up their flight muscles before they start flying. Now, ectotherms can also absorb heat from the ground by conduction. For example, this snake will absorb heat via the lower surface of its body. Here's a lizard absorbing heat via conduction from the surface of a car tire. Notice how the lizard is pressing flat against the tire. This increases the surface area of the lizard's body in contact with the tire, and this increases the absorption of heat by conduction. Some ectotherms generate heat locally. For example, butterflies can vibrate their wings before flying. In this case, metabolic reactions generate heat, warming up their flight muscles before flight. OK, now ectotherms have several ways to cool down. Firstly, by limiting their movement, they reduce the generation of heat by metabolic reactions. They can also avoid the sun's radiation by finding shade or by burrowing into the earth or under leaves. They can also press themselves against cool ground to lose heat by conduction. 
This marine iguana has positioned its body to minimise the surface area exposed to the sun. Marine iguanas can also enter the sea to cool down. OK, now as well as behavioural adaptations, some ectotherms show physiological adaptations to control their core body temperature. For example, marine iguanas have a dark coloured skin. This absorbs more of the sun's radiation than lighter colours. When marine iguanas are in the sea, they lose heat to the water by conduction through their skin. In this case, their heart rate slows down. This reduces blood flow through the skin and reduces heat loss. Now, as we said at the start, ectotherms cannot control their core temperature using heat from metabolic reactions. However, their behavioural and physiological adaptations help ectotherms to keep their core temperature within an acceptable range. And by gaining heat from their environment rather than metabolism, ectotherms can survive on limited food. In the next video, we look at thermoregulation in endotherms such as humans.